Hello everyone, I'm Monica. This is my channel Money Reads where I talk about books and things and today we're gonna talk about book to movie adaptations. Now I know there have been like a bajillion of these um, book to movie adaptation videos but I wanted to throw a little twist in mine. It's not the greatest twist in the world but this is my <laughs> little take on it and that's basically I'm gonna be reading books and watching movies where I have no idea about either of them. So I've never watched the movie and I've also never read the book. Of course I'm gonna read the book first and then watch the movie and then I'm just gonna tell you my thoughts on it. And that is my brilliant idea. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it has been done before but I thought that this would be a fun little way to get through my April TBR. Now if you saw my video which is my April TBR, you would have seen these books in it. But I wanted to remind you of what they are and tell you that these books feature in this video. In this video. <laughs> this video is going great. The first book that I planned to read for this video was actually kind of a mistake because I didn't know there was a movie based off of this book but then when I started reading the book I was researching it just to you know do some academic research and I found there was a movie so I decided to add it. So that first book is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte and as you know now if you saw my March wrap up was it March? Yes if you saw my March wrap up then you know that I already read this you know what I rated it but I haven't seen the movie yet so I'm gonna do that soon and you'll see here what I thought about both the movie and the book as little vlog style clips. The next book that I planned for this TBR is My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. We all know I love Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. If you've seen my channel art you know that I have the quote I dreamt we went to Manderley again last night on my channel banner because I just love that book so much. So I'm ex I have really high expectations for this book and the movie looks amazing. So all I have seen is the trailer and I love that I'm going into it after reading the book and the main actress Rachel Weisz is like one of my favorite actresses. So I'm going into this with really high expectations. The next book I plan to pick up for this TBR is Brain on Fire by Susanna Gallen. This book is based around the real story of a girl whose brain basically started going wrong on her and nobody could figure out and she ended up in a psych ward and she lost control of her entire body and it's horrible and this is the story told from her perspective about her and the doctor who helped save her and there is a movie out there which stars Chloe Grace Moretz about this book and I'm really looking forward to it. You'll just have to see in the clips coming up whether I enjoyed the book and the movie. And the final book I have for this TBR is, I don't know if you're gonna see that, but it's Solaris by Stanislav Lem, which is a hard sci-fi novel based in space and the movie stars George Clooney and I know that it's kind of a little bit on the darker side, like we're talking space isolation, themes of like sadness and reminiscence on the past and on life on earth and everything and I'm all down for that. So uh, all I know about the movie is that it starts George Clooney. All I know about the book is that there are a bunch of astronauts that go to this planet to explore it and either the planet or the ship or something starts messing with their mind and who doesn't want to read about that? I do. I don't know about the movie. You know, I think the movie's a little cheesy, maybe, I don't know. I've heard of both good and bad things and we'll see, we'll see how that goes. All right, and that's it for that TBR. And that's it, that's it for this little uh, book to movie adaptation going in blind TBR. And now I leave you with the clips of me reading these books and also watching these movies. Let's see how it goes. Hello there. So I decided to start this now even though I've already read 23% of Jane Eyre and so far I'm really liking it. It's really Victorian. Yeah, I was looking at how much I have read. Yeah, I have read exactly 23% of Jane Eyre and so far I'm really enjoying it. It's pretty Victorian. I really like the character of Jane. I really like the beginning part which is it basically just ended the part of her childhood and now she just got to, where is it, Mr. Rothchester's house. So far it's been pretty, I don't want to say boring, it hasn't been boring at all. It's just been really subdued and I'm wondering how that's going to translate into film. This is a 20 hour audiobook. 
My cat using my cat is using the litter box. She cannot wait for me to turn on the camera to use the litter box. But anyway, I will keep updating you. I'm probably going to read this through the weekend and then I also have a weekend vlog. So, I don't know how that's going to work. I'm probably going to stop Jane Eyre. Is she in the litter box? Yeah. So I'm probably going to stop reading Jane Eyre on like Saturday and Sunday so that I can focus on my weekend vlog and not do two vlogs at this. I don't know how this is going to work. It's more complicated than I thought it was going to be, but I really want to watch the movie now. So that's good. Clearly, it's the next day. But I just... Okay, so I woke up this morning and I was like, I'm going to put my audiobook to see if I fall back asleep. What the hell is happening right now in Jane Eyre? Is like literally Mr. Rochester proposing to her and she's like, I can't or some or she doesn't get. You know that 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 gif, I don't know if you know it, but when like the wrong Miss Universe was announced and the other girl in the back was like, go get your crown girl. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. Jane, just marry the man. <laughs> Is he literally proposing to you and you're like, no, I can't, even though I love you. What is happening? What is going on in Jane Eyre? Like, what just happened? Like, why is this happening? I don't understand. Ugh, I'm so angry. But also, I must say that that little twist they throw in there, I called that on like, you know, like 200 pages ago, I was like, that that is that is the twist because it was just too obvious to me but i'm still really enjoying it and i'm about 80 percent done with the book and i thought i would update you because i haven't updated you i'm angry but both i'm not i am both angry and not shocked that's what i was looking for and that is my update this clip is just to say that we don't like sinjin we definitely won't like sinjin nope sinjin is a no for me. So it's been a while. Not for you. For you it's been like a second since we last spoke. But for me it's been a while because I took a break. Just a little break. But now I'm going to be watching Jane Eyre, the movie, while Rodrigo games. Look at Rodrigo over there. Say hi, bro. Hi. I'm going to be watching Jane Eyre. And I'm going to be watching the movie with Mia Wasakaz. Was it Costa? Was it? I'm gonna be watching the latest one <laughs> because that's the one that is on Amazon Prime. So I'll let you know my thoughts once the movie's over because I was like I could read, but I could watch a movie, and honestly, I feel like watching a movie right now. So that's what's gonna happen. I'll let you know how it goes. I just finished watching the movie. I did not like it. I mean. It was fine, but Jeebus, the drama of it all, like they stripped away anything remotely, not good as in like, you know, but anything nice that ever happened to Jane Eyre was like, nope, nope, that never happened. That part never happened. Everything sucks. It's all horrible. And then the end is really uncompelling. The acting is amazing, I think the visuals are amazing, and I think, I don't know, I'm thinking about making a video about this, but I really enjoyed reading Jane Eyre. For me it was fun, it was a fun experience. This was not fun. This was like the most dramatic thing since Anakin Skywalker not liking sand. I don't like sand. Alright, like, this was some drums, some serious dramas. And I just felt that they stripped away any fun that could have been had in the movie. And I know a lot of people dis might disagree with me that Jane Eyre, like, is fun. But I think that there's a lot to salvage there that is not just, life is shit. Because that's what this movie made me feel. This movie made me feel like life is shit. <laughs> Seriously. All of the good was stripped away. Like even the part about her going to the to the orphanage place, finishing school, whatever you want to call it. They made that horrible. It was like it was like Oliver Twist horrible. And in the book it wasn't like that. So I was gonna wait until tomorrow to do my reaction, but I'm just kind of angry. Because 
I remember like talking to my sister about this movie, about this book, and we were like laughing. It is a tragic tale. It's not a funny tale, but there are parts of it that are enjoyable. That's the thing. Nothing about this film was enjoyable except the visuals and the acting. The rest was just like drama and everyone is so sad and it's so cruel. You know, like there, there's like, no, I didn't like it. Um, in this case, I think if I had watched the movie before, I would have liked the movie more. Not more, but I would have liked the movie more as like itself. But then if I would have read the book, I would have been like, what the hell? Like, what happened? Why, why is everyone just miserable? Everyone is miserable in this movie all the time. And I know that in Jane Eyre, people are miserable a lot, but not like this. I don't know. In this case, boo to the movie, yay to the book. Let's get going to my next read. Hi there. So after reading Jane Eyre and watching the movie, time has come for me to update you on what my next read is for my book and movie blind date thing. I keep saying thing. I was gonna say thing I'm a Bob, but I decided against that. <laughs> but anyway, I started reading last night. My cousin Rachel, I'm only like 10 pages in and so far so good. I was actually, I don't know why I wasn't expecting this to be from the perspective of what's his name? Is it William? It's not William. Philip! <laughs> his name is Philip. So <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be from the perspective of Philip, but I guess it makes sense. But anyway, I'm already intrigued. I'm already 100% into it. Uh, we'll see what I think in about a couple of hours. I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done today, to be honest, because I feel like being lazy and going on a Netflix binge of Nailed It, which, by the way, is the best show on Netflix. Like, I don't care what, whatever, just watch Nailed It. It's amazing, I promise. <laughs> All right, I'll update you later. Also, shout out to my natural hair for being this completely gorgeous, when I have nowhere to be. You should see it when I am like, I have to teach or something, it looks like a mop. But today, it just decided to be like, hey mom, how about we cheer you up by like looking really nice? Thank you, hair. I wish you would do this when I have to actually leave the house. Hi, it's me again, still reading my cousin Rachel. And I just wanted to update you to tell you that Philip is a dum-dum like a straight up dum-dum. Now, I don't know if Rachel is like malicious or, you know, anything, but like, I'm still not sure because, you know, mystery, but this man is a dum-dum. Dumb, dumb man. See, this is the thing with Daphne du Maurier. The beginning of her books, or at least the two that I have read, are kind of like, well, you know, I'm kind of into this, it's interesting. And then you get halfway and you're like, I must know what is going on. Like, what is happening? So I'm at that point. But uh, yeah, Philip is dummy, is a dummy so far. Um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But right now I kind of want to smack him. Also, I thought I'd take a page from Reagan over at Peru's project and show you what I'm wearing because I feel kind of cute today. So I'm wearing this sweater from Zara and then I'm wearing these pants from Mango and they are like high-waisted, they're like mom jean-ish and I love them and they're super comfortable and they let my, oh, and I'm also wearing these amazing socks I got for Christmas. They're Star Wars socks, so. This is my outfit of the day because I am getting dressed every single day of the quarantine because if I don't, then I'll just wear pajamas all the time. And as much as I love my pajamas, I can't be wearing pajamas all the time. And I'm still working and I work through Skype, so I even do my makeup for those people. I hope they appreciate the effort. <laughs> Hi there, what's up? So I realized that I never gave you my full thoughts on finishing My Cousin Rachel. And that was because I think this was one of those times I really needed to digest the book. I knew what was going to happen, unlike Rebecca, where I had no idea what was going to happen. In this one, I had it pretty figured out, or at least partly figured out from the get-go. 
but that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy it. I still gave it five out of five stars. I really enjoyed the characters and I was kind of sitting here. I'm supposed to be doing a 24 hour readathon, but that's clearly not happening right now because I'm just not feeling it. So I thought I could watch Rebecca. Not Rebecca. <laughs> I could watch my cousin Rachel for this other video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the movie, I'm gonna watch it, and then I'm gonna give you my book and movie reaction. As far as the book, loved it, five out of five stars. I love Daphne du Maurier's writing, I love how she sucks you in, the atmosphere, everything. But now I'm gonna watch the movie, which I'm so excited about, and I always kept picturing Rachel like Rachel Weisz, which is really interesting. Well, not really interesting, it's just something that happened because she's the actress that was chosen to play her in the movie, so. But I don't know who's going to play Philip or who's going to play Ambrose. I'm down. I'm excited. I hope this is better than, <laughs> than Jane Eyre because Jane Eyre was like... Jane Eyre was not my, my movie. <laughs> not my movie. I know there's ver different versions, but I, I explained that I watched the most recent version. So yeah. I'm gonna download the movie and watch it and then I'll give you my thoughts about it. So, see you in a bit. I'll show you what I'm wearing today. You can see Rodrigo in the background. Today I went with this sweater. I kind of call it like a Christmassy sweater. And then of course mom jeans because look, I'm gonna be in the house all this time. Oh, and my socks. <laughs> I'm gonna be in the house forever at this point. <laughs> so, uh, mom jeans are great are a great way to make you feel like you are actually wearing pants, but you know, they're super comfy. So yes, that is what I'm wearing today. Mom jeans and a bit of a colorful sweater. I also put some makeup on, don't worry, I didn't put any makeup on my still healing eye. And yeah, we. I had a rid I had made the bed, but I read on my bed, so I, I went under the covers and was reading. I literally just got done watching the movie and I loved it. Oh my goodness, I love the changes that they made, which is rare because I'm, I'm sorry, are my jeans in the way? <laughs> yes, I'm pantless, okay? I'm at home. Just take those old records off, yeah. Going back to the movie, I loved it. I love the changes that they made. Also, this actress, um, Holiday Granger, she's also in... Oh, uh, Jane Eyre, and she's in this movie, and I love her in this movie. I love the changes that they made to Louise, or not the changes, but I love how they characterized Louise. I think they made her more likable, and um, like made her play a more important role. I love, I, I don't know the name of the actor, I'll put it, I'll insert it somewhere around here, and uh, the actor of Philip, I was going to say Ambrose, and I love the ending, and I love how... Just like in the book, you're you're kind of left hanging like what happened? Was this actually a thing? I give the movie a 5 out of 5 and I give the book a 5 out of 5 So I'm really really excited because I thought After seeing the movie for Jane Eyre, I was really worried that I was gonna Hate every single movie and like love every single book or maybe I'll Like some movies some books, but in this case both the movie and the book thumbs up I think definitely read the book first. Or you know, you know what? Actually, in this case, I would say go for the movie first. Because when I was watching the movie, I was so focused on, okay, when are they going to do this? Okay, when are they going to do that? Are they going to add this? Are they going to add that? That I think if I had seen the movie first, I would have enjoyed the experience of reading the book much more. I don't know. I, I think this is one of those rare cases where... I think seeing the movie first and then reading the book is actually not a detriment to the reading experience. So I loved the movie, so underrated, and I'm actually, I'm starting to fangirl over Holiday Granger. Every time I see her, I saw her first in the Borgias, and I love her there, but I think she's grown so much as an actress. I loved it. So definitely a very good experience for this book to movie blind date situation <laughs> all right so i guess it's time to pick up the next book next time you see me i'll probably be wearing something else so there you go <laughs> loved it okay so i just finished my last class of the day and i want to start the clip i'm sorry you can see all the junk food <laughs> 
I wanted to start this clip to talk about Solaris, which I'm reading in my Kindle by Stanislav Lem. And so far, I'm loving this book. I think I said that before, that originally I had started to read this book in, in not Kindle, in um, audiobook format. But it wasn't doing it for me. But actually reading it physically is doing wonders for the story. I was already 30% in, so I started it at the last thing that I remember or the last like important part that I remember. And I don't want to spoil anything, but as I had said before, these... This book is about this. He goes to study this planet. Now this planet is really weird. They say that the ocean in this planet has some kind of sentient form of life form. Maybe not, maybe yes. And well, they go over there to study it. And when he gets there, he finds that everyone has lost their damn mind. And they're talking about that they're seeing people from their past, people that have passed and whatever. And what happens is, and this is not a spoiler because this is basically what the book is about, he also gets a visit from someone from his past. And I am at the beginning of that part right now, and oh my gosh, it's so good to read it. I don't know if it's like this translation is really good because of course this is a translated book, I don't remember. The original, what's it, the, other, the original language, I'm sorry, I've been working all day. The original language it was translated from, but it is a translated book. But so far I'm loving it. And I wonder what that movie's gonna be like with George Clooney, because I love George Clooney. I think we all can love on George Clooney a little bit, but let's face it, George Clooney plays one character exactly, and that character is George Clooney, and this character is nothing like George Clooney. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Like I said, 30% in, and I'll update you anywhere <laughs> at any point, okay? So, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye, guys. So this is today's outfit. I'm wearing this like cardigan thing that I adore and then underneath it I've got like an olive colored All right, I'll catch up with you guys later and talk to you about Solaris Either today or tomorrow depends because the Sun is going down really late um, Lately, but I don't know how much sunlight there will be when I finish my last class of the day So if there's enough sunlight I'll let you know, and I think something's burning in the kitchen, so let me get to that. Bye, guys. T-shirt, and then I'm wearing, uh, I'm not wearing mom jeans. I'm actually wearing skinny jeans and my slippers. And that is my outfit for the day. I'm also not wearing makeup today, and I'm wearing my glasses. I actually wear my glasses all the time, except when I'm filming sit-down videos because the glare on them, I just can't. And also, then you can't see my pretty makeup. Hi there, it's clearly another day and I am 80% done with Solaris by Stanislav Lem. And I don't know how they're gonna do this. I am worried about this movie. I believe this movie was in, from the 90s or maybe the 80s and how the fuck are they gonna make this into a movie? Like who read this book and was like, you know what, I think this would make a good movie. What? This book has so much philosophical, crazy, cosmic horror shit in it where it's like, what are you trying to do here? Like, I don't know how they're gonna make this into a movie. As far as my enjoyment of the book, I'm gonna be honest. I like half of the book. The half of the book that has to do with human emotions and with the main character and his guest, which I'm not gonna tell you what that is, but his guest. Um, that part I love and then there's parts where it's just pages and pages and pages of what I believe to be fake science and like theories that come from this planet that ha and I'm like what is this like I don't know what this means what does this mean I don't care so for now the book is sitting at a comfortable 3, 3.5 because there are parts of this book that are brilliant and then parts where I'm just like what does it mean? I don't know, you know? So I'm wondering how they're gonna do this. I, I, I can't, I, I'm kind of worried about this movie. Maybe it'll be an improvement over the book, I don't know, or maybe it will just not, which I think is actually gonna be the case. I'm actually thinking this movie is gonna bleh.
bond. So I know that this might not be, oh, there's Rodrigo. Rodrigo, say hi. <laughs> I know this might not be to everyone's taste, but I absolutely love this outfit. I'm wearing these like really um, flowy linen pants. And then I've got this brown sweater, which I love. It's so comfy. And right now we have entered fuck you weather. That means we are in spring. Where is it cold? Is it hot? Is it snowing? Is it not? We don't know. So basically, I'm dressed for both. And of course, the handy dandy slippers, because ain't nobody getting out of the house for a while. <laughs> so, I just finished Solaris by Stanislav Lem, and I don't know what happened, but this book went from like a three star to a five star in the span of like a chapter. It just turned into the kind of book that I wanted to read. Like, I think it got bogged down in certain parts with like the the like explanation of theories and things that aren't even real and and i was like i don't care and like numbers and made up figures and shit like that but in the end it turned into like a first contact alien book that i love i i don't want to spoil anything but there is no way this movie is gonna live up to the book <laughs> Absolutely no way this movie is going to live up to the book. I, I I just can't see it. I can't imagine it because so much of it is so philosophical and also in the time this movie was made, I keep forgetting when it was, but I'm pretty sure it was like 80s or 90s. Again, I'll tell you later or I'll insert it in here somewhere. How are they going to make this? Also, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to focus more on the whole relationship aspect than on the philosophical alien, like, first contact alien aspect. God aspect. It, it, got, real, it got real intense pretty fast, <laughs> not going to lie. So, what I'm going to do now is I have to watch the movie for Br Brain on Fire. And the movie for Solaris. So I think I'm going to do that right now. And maybe I'll get this video finally done. This video, of course, you guys only see like the little sections and stuff. So it doesn't seem like it's been that long. This video has been over a month in the making. Because I've been reading other books in the middle of reading these books. So yeah. I'm going to find these movies. I'm going to watch them. And I'm going to tell you what I think. If I don't tell you today, I'll tell you tomorrow. So... I'll let you know. I'm back. I just found the movie Solaris and it's actually from 2002. I'm like here thinking it's an 80s movie. It's from 2002, which I mean, it's still what, 18 years ago, but still it's not from the 80s, it's from 2002. So I'm gonna watch that and I'm kind of excited about it. I don't know, I'm, I'm interested. I don't think it's gonna be as good as the book or maybe because it cuts out the stuff from the book that I didn't enjoy so much, maybe it'll be good. We'll see, I'll be right back. I'm not done watching the movie and I know I usually don't interject in like while I'm watching the movie, but I just wanna say early 2000s futuristic movie fashion is goals. Like that's how I want to dress. We're not even gonna get into how much I wanna dress like Dune, but I'm watching this movie and so far it's really good. <laughs> like I'm only a couple of minutes in, but I'm kind of impressed. Okay, so I'm gonna keep watching, but yeah, early 2000s outfits for futuristic movies. Goal. <sighs> I think I might have found a new favorite movie. This is such a strange turn of events for this video, I can't, like, wow. If you haven't seen Solaris, okay, 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 wait, wait, wait. If you haven't seen Solaris, you have to watch it. And here's the thing, reading the book is only gonna enhance the experience of watching the film. The film is incredible. The soundtrack, the, the settings, the acting, the way they condensed the changes they made, 
I actually recommend you watch the film and then read the book because I think the film does a really good job of condensing certain things and leaving out other stuff and then just to compliment it, read it, but but I am so shook. Like I really was not expecting for this movie. Like I haven't even taken my headphones out yet because I was watching it on my computer. I was not expecting to find a new favorite movie and we're talking like this is going in like my what is on my oh I'm sorry there's a mess always on there but this is probably going to go on my top 10 favorite movies of all time this is such a hidden gem of the early 2000s I think it has a pretty low score not a pretty low it's got like a medium score on a lot of websites but I think this movie was just beyond like it was way before its time. I think audiences today would like this movie. It is also a weird movie. Like, it's a, it's a weird, kind of creepy, kind of strange movie. But I like that. So, I am... I'm so surprised. Like, 5 out of 5 stars to the movie? 5 out of 5 stars to the book? Like, what? I was expecting to not like this movie and not like this book. And it's just a complete turnaround. I am just shook it. I, I I can't I can't believe this. I <sighs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the Books and Blind Date. Not Books and Blind Date. To the book and movie adaptation blind blind date thing I'm about I'm doing. I'm I'm it's not a readathon, it's like a project. There we go. That's what we're calling it from now on. The book plus <laughs> The book plus film adaptation blind date project and today on a whim because I was gonna start reading Nevermore but I just kind of wasn't feeling it and this was staring me down and yes so I'm um, about 10 pages into this so far it's interesting um, the writing style I can't tell much from 10 pages but it's so far so good and I'm really excited to get to it and I thought I would update you that I started this and that I will probably finish it in like a week or something <laughs> because <laughs> what is happening <laughs> because my mood is all over the place when it comes to reading right now I was like in a really big slump for like a couple of days and now I just don't know what's going on but other than that I thought I'd show you my outfit today because I look kind of cute and I think that that's like been a thing through these videos so yes start it brain on fire and let me show you what I'm wearing and okay first of all let's point out the elephant in the room I'm not wearing black I know I know I'm not wearing black okay so it's weird I know I feel weird <laughs> but anyway I'm wearing this sweater that was gifted to me this Christmas it's super big but it's actually not like warm it would sorry but it's actually not warm. It's not like a warm sweater. It's actually more of a spring sweater because it's springtime. And I'm wearing these pants, which are like high-waisted mom jean pants with slits in the knee. And I'm not wearing shoes because, once again, there are no plans of going outside today. But, you know, I can still you know, look cute inside and I still have Skype classes to teach, so yeah. Anyway, I'll update you when I've read more of Brain on Fire. Good morning, everyone. I am still in bed because today I start work at 12.30, which I'm so thankful for because yesterday was a long day at work. But anyway, I've been reading some more of this and I have thoughts to share with you. It's a hard book for me to read. First of all, it's an incredible book. I 100% recommend. I'm on page 150, so I'm a little bit over 50%. But um, here's the thing. I've had a similar experience to what's going on in the book, where basically nobody knows what's wrong with you, and your brain is just not functioning how it should. It's a long story, but parts of this book really got to me because it reminded me of my own experience and how they diagnosed me with 10,000 million things until they got to the right diagnosis so yeah it's 
both really interesting it's really beautiful and it's really authentic no my cat's here <laughs> oh no hi sushi and there she is and here's penny <laughs> so yeah i'm kind of wondering how they're gonna translate this to film because i don't know how i would translate this to film it's a really difficult story uh to tell and i hope that the movie doesn't disappoint but i have a feeling the movie will disappoint because there's so many nuances here that i don't think can be translated into film like the things that susanna feels and stuff like that i i just don't think that film is the best medium to translate that to but overall i'm really amazed at this book and it's like it's hitting home for me and well there's just a lot a lot that i and it's really hard for me to read but i the good thing is i know that the end is a good ending and that if I didn't know that, I wouldn't continue to read this book. Or if I knew that, it wasn't a good ending. Because it would just kind of be a little... Hitting a little bit close to home. And the things that could have been versus what actually was. That, uh, you know, stuff. It's really hard to talk about this. It, it really is. Because I like I, I don't want to... This, this is a channel about books. This is not a channel about me, per se. But... But the, I see a lot of me in this book, and I wonder how the movie's gonna treat it. I I don't I haven't seen even the the reviews for the movie or anything like that because this is a book to move book to movie adaptation blind date project. So I kind of want to go into it completely blind. Hi there, it's me again, and I actually finished Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. I loved it. It was amazing. And I'm going to be honest. I saw the trailer for the movie. I'm not going to watch it today because I've got a lot of classes today. So I'm going to leave it for the weekend. And um, I'm not sure they're going to do the book justice. I'll be honest. Um, I have low expectations for the movie. So maybe the movie might surprise me. I hope it does surprise me because the book was amazing. It, it was great. Seeing this woman's journey... And the way she finds her journey, because she can't remember her journey, is beautiful. And please pick up this book and read it. So, yeah. So I'll uh, check back in with you guys once I've watched the movie and let you know what I think. Okay, I just finished Brain on Fire, which means two things. Number one, that this video is finally done, but we'll get to the conclusions later. And number two, that I was half right. The movie starts, like, the changes they made in the movie, I don't know. I didn't like the changes they made in the movie, unlike with some uh, of the other movies where I thought the changes added more than they took away. In this case, I think the changes were kind of... Like, I don't understand why they, like, lowered her age, because I'm pretty sure in the book she was 27, and in the movie she's 21. And they like give no explanation for that. Also, there's a character in the mo in the book, the editor. Um, in the movie, he's almost kind of like an antagonist. And they changed a lot of things that were like, why did you change that? The beginning and the end of the movie felt like a Hallmark movie. But the middle part of the movie, I feel that's where the movie really shines. And where we get to see the like what is most like the book so and i and i have to say the acting the acting is actually really good glowy grace moretz really kills it in the role i think she did an amazing job i think all the actors did i think the actor that played the doctor also did a really good job i think he really brought forth like that warmth that some doctors have and I think the other doctors, I mean, I think everybody did a good job. It's just that the script at the beginning and at the end was not my thing. So I'm going to give the movie maybe 2.5, 3 stars where I gave the book, I believe I gave the book 4 stars, 4.5. Yep, 
that's pretty much it and well tomorrow because I'm really tired today I'll film the like outro and I don't know final thoughts to this video hi guys so it's the next day as you can see and I'm here to give you my final thoughts on this whole book to movie adaptation blind date project and I believe that's the first time I've said that right since I started this whole project but anyway I wanted to kind of just get it on here for a little bit just like a Fine, yeah, a final thoughts like what did I learn? Did I learn anything? Um, was this project fun? Was it not? First of all, the project was a lot of fun, but it was also kind of a bit stressful because believe it or not, I don't enjoy watching movies. So I think that that was already in my head when I was reading the books is like, how are they going to adapt this? How they're going to adapt that? And of course, there's always the whole, the movie is, oh, the, um, the book is always better than the movie thing. And what I learned this project was that that's not necessarily true. Movies can add to the reading experience it, very much. And books can add to the movie watching experience. In fact, I believe it was two of the um, movies that I watched where I actually would have preferred to watch the movie and then have read the book. I was not expecting to find a new favorite movie of all time in this thing and that is what ended up happening. Solaris is probably one of my top five sci-fi movies of all time. The 2002 version, I did find out that there was one made in the 70s but that's not the one that I watched. I watched the one with George Clooney. It was impeccable. I think they adapted it so so well. Like they changed a lot and and i liked that because there was no way you were going to adapt this book faithfully and if they do the same with dune by the way i'm going to be very happy like if they adapt it to a place where you can enjoy the movie and then like complement it by reading the book then that's good that's another thing that i learned through this sometimes it's better to watch the movie first the book is always going to give you more detail. The book is always going to be longer. You're going to spend more time with it. So of course you're going to get more out of it. But that doesn't mean that the movie isn't good. It just means that it's a different medium. So yeah, what I also liked was that sometimes to get across things that are written in a book, you have to change some things within the movie and i know some naysayers that are like oh but that wasn't like that in the book but i actually enjoyed that i don't know this whole project taught me that maybe i've been going about movie and book adaptations in the wrong way by reading the book first and then going into the movie i actually think that from now on i'm going to be more open-minded to watching the film or the tv adaptation first and then going into the book because i feel the book can only enhance the experience of having watched a very good film and that's the other thing whether it's adapted from a book whether it's just you know a script in the end the movie is going to be a little universe packed tight within itself and with within that you have good things and bad things just like you have good books and bad books and just because a movie is adapted doesn't make it any worse you know like I, I just tend to think that we 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 have this idea that if the movie is not 100 percent faithful to the book then it's not good and then we have the other side where where sometimes the movie needs to be faithful for the book that's the thing i learned with daphne du maurier's my cousin rachel it was so faithful and it of course felt a little bit rushed but of course movies are going to always feel rushed when you compare them to the book because in the end the book you spend what hours upon hours reading it and in a movie look nobody wants a four hour movie unless you're watching like a tv show then you know you get to divide it within chapters so there is no way they can do everything and also actors need creative licenses because if not then they're just machines doing exactly what the book did and that's not acting <laughs> 
So yeah, I think this project was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing it again. I think I'm looking forward now to doing something which I had in mind already, which is going into either a book where I have already seen the movie or going into a movie where I have already seen the book. In this case, I had no idea about either of the two mediums and that's why it was called the book to movie adaptation blind date. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. I found new favorite books. I found new favorite movies. And I also found some sucky movies and... No, I didn't find any sucky books. Did I not like any of the books? No, actually, I loved all of the books. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for um, coming back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching if you are new. Please remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I post videos every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and sometimes Tuesdays and Thursdays if I'm feeling a little saucy, but never Saturdays and Sundays because your girl need a rest. <laughs> With that being said, thank you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys. What you hear is my cat. She wants to get in, she wants to come out. She wants to get in, she wants to come out. Girl cannot make up her damn mind. <laughs> so I'm gonna go open the door so that then she can start scratching it again because she wants to go in where my husband is. Oh, I'll see you guys later, <laughs> bye.